Welcome to Binary Jazz, uh, a podcast about things. To teach the AI stuff. Yes, a, a podcast that will be in the future uh, used to train artificial intelligences about what human beings perhaps communicated like. Um, I, you and know, being and, a subset funny, of human beings, we do qualify. Funny point about that is as I was uploading last week's episode, um, I noticed a new field in YouTube that was something to the effect of like there's a new thing that it can do is like find discussion topics and potentially add this like new like discussion topics things that were talked about in the video to mm. the description of the video so like we really are actively feeding the ai right now with every word that we speak then this is a good opportunity to show you that the most perfect rock i found <laughs> <laughs> whoa you found that like in the wild that is amazing it's just very round and very smooth and i just felt like <laughs> if, I don't know. Uh, have i, I ever told have i ever you remember that you know in in princess mononoke maybe i assume that you both are familiar with princess mononoke okay there's those there's those little spirits with the big eyes mm. well we found this rock at the beach uh That's several weird. years ago <clears throat> and uh, I keep it because it's my little spirit of the forest rock. I'm so awesome. I'm disappointed that I don't have a rock on my desk to show. <laughs> I have many rocks I, on my desk. I have I have rocks. I've got gems. Like who am like this is who I am. <laughs> yeah, very on brand. I have a yes. I have a, a, a. Whoa! Look at that! Like Shiva a zebra. Oh, that's amazing. This yeah. this is this is not a natural rock. This is a carved rock. This is a oh. like a meditation thing. I got it at a at a woo uh shop uh and it is called a shiva's lingam uh oh, okay. and it was it was with the someone's yoni um i can't remember who's probably yeah i don't know but it's no they're yeah. perfect like i don't know rocks are perfect Whoever shiva's been hanging out with rocks yeah, it's, are the it's, original it's fidget give you spinners masculine <laughs> energy and testosterone stuff and i don't know it's a fidget thing that i have on my desk I, well, I'm while, playing while we're the, showing while we're showing people uh, what we have on the desk. It's not uh, quite Allison, as cool, you'll appreciate. But... <laughs> while, while we're showing each other what we have on our desk, uh, you'll appreciate this, Allison. Uh, uh, Aaron gave me this. Ooh, that's is, awesome! Like, which is a tarot card like oh, holder right. thing. Like, yeah. yeah, you can put your tarot cards in it, but I don't use it. I use it to put my crystals and my Shiva's lingam in it. <laughs> <laughs> multi-purpose, multi-purpose. Yeah. Because otherwise it rolls away, so like it kind of does need to be somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a show where we talk about rocks, apparently. Yeah, we're, we have we're other desks. gemologists. We're rock hounds. Mm. <laughs> I mean, we really are rock hounds. So <laughs> that's that's a legit description. This morning was um, the kindergarten Q two uh, awards ceremony, at Charlotte School. Um, Come on, which is, I. <laughs> All six kindergarten classes, and I think pretty much every kid had at least two awards. Uh, so I would like, have so much fun coming up with awards for kids. Well, I mean, a lot of it was like A, B, honor roll, which I guess, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh I was whatever. thinking it was just like best dressed. And like <laughs> yeah, right? Coolest no, imagination they had... style. Or like... <laughs> they call them, so like electives, or I guess when you're in elementary school, they're not electives, but like, like STEAM and music and PE and... Oh. Um, Tech is different from Steam, which is cool. So there's like a computer teacher, and I don't know. There were six of them up Wait, there. Wait, sorry, kindergarten? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just yep, I know. Um, sure. Nope. I just feel like... Nope. Nope. Hard no on that. Wow. So in addition to the teachers, AA, AB honor roll, there was like the oh, there's how is there honor roll in kindergarten? Well, just knock it out of the park. You just. <laughs> Well, there were there was there were a couple classes where it's clear the teachers on board with that because it was like the entire class was like, a a uh, like yes, they're they're kindergarten. Like, what's the expectation here? You know, like <laughs> they're writing their name on there. Are they socialized? And, Great, that's all yeah. we need. <laughs> well, some of the teachers were really cool. They were talking about how some of these students came in and were, um, you know, uh, at this point, uh, last quarter they didn't speak uh, very much English, and so. Like they were, you know, acknowledging that the difficulty in coming in and not speaking the language. And so this is a second language and huge improvement in ELA and blah, blah, blah. So it was neat. It was fun. Um, 
the uh, uh, the specials is was where I, where I was headed with this. Um, the uh, I feel like there's a geology session coming at some point based on some of the other si science, some of the other science stuff that I've seen. Wouldn't that be surprised when Charlotte comes home talking about rocks? Mm -hmm. So, and then we'll have a rock collection on the porch. Or I pulled point. something out of my mom mentioned something, and I was like, "Oh yeah, it's like uh, it's an Ignatius something or <laughs> like I don't know." I it was like Ignatius. I had this mind meld of knowledge about rocks, and she was just like, "How do you know that?" And I was like, "I don't know." They taught us about different kinds of rocks and some, and that really stuck with me. <laughs> It's really fascinating because there are people that really get into these, and then there's the rest of the world. <laughs> so, sadly, like sadly, I think that 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 my family is part of the first category. <laughs> really into rocks? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, we I'm live in fucking Utah. What else is there? There's rocks everywhere. I'm the one that started this off. <laughs> yeah, aren't there like Mormon social clubs you could go to? And no, I mean. I don't get invited to those. No. Oh, I did, I, I took for granted the invitation part. I just assumed they would be welcoming. You could show up and uh, no, the, the, and the, like, I mean, this okay. is weird. I want stories. I, <laughs> I, I um, the things that are adjacent to what you suggested are the the sort of like singles gatherings that I that I know exist. And no, like if you're mm. not if you're not in the war, it's usually like ward centric. It's like this yeah. the the singles ward, or or no no no. They, sometimes they have like a singles ward where it's like a bunch of different wards, and it's all the singles from those wards, and they have like a a, a group meet thing to like meet meet with other single mormon people from outside your ward i'll make a blanket statement and say most lds people in utah i would guess are like unless you're interested in also being a mormon they're just fine not well, hanging out with you yes yes i okay. mean i don't that, know that, any, is, that is so... a pretty broad statement um and I I'm, do this think... is a very blanket I, i'm just going yeah. off of what i know from my listen my, if, I, if I, somebody I, gets a, if somebody in the audience somebody if we offend some if we offend somebody you just email audience, us just email us on the website me. i would be happy to chat if my second cousin megan is listening to the podcast <laughs> shout out to that side of the family <laughs> i yeah. i think that i think that while I think that's broadly true, I think that there is always, obviously, always exceptions, and I think that oh, a course. lot of the uh, a lot of the people that I have met uh, are, you know, cool with whatever, dude. But um, I, I also get the feeling that, like, even if you're like super close with any of them, you probably like there's a there's if they're active in the church, which is a big distinction. Then That's there is like a level of like like removal if you aren't part of the church. Also, like you would never be like besties with this person because you're just not one of us. Yeah. Um. Okay. I think I had a sillier idea in my head. <laughs> I think in my head. Actually, this is a fascinating conversation because this is more about me than anybody else. <laughs> I think in my head, I think that they were all just like were like, uh, like kumbaya. Well, no, like 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 we get that it's a joke, right? <laughs> but that may be just my lack of interaction with them. So they're the ones that send people out on bicycles, right? I mean, like two sometimes... by two, and go like like two by two for recruit, sure. Recruit yes. in towns. I guess bicycle. Uh, yeah, maybe bicycles maybe isn't a requirement. I guess probably not. <laughs> bicycles isn't a requirement. I've not. But the, read but the two by Chris, I'm not sure what the two by two is definitely a thing because when they okay. when when Mormon missionary or LDS missionaries come go like whatever yep. canvas they're they're usually doing it in pairs. Okay, so I've had very little interaction with those. That's my only interaction, and I feel like the one. I guess two. It would have to be two that I interacted with kind of were like in on the joke was my take on the matter was that they were here doing this thing but it was just the thing they had to do so but this was a non-utah situation oh well, god it was in the, hell, probably, the hellscape of florida so they I were mean, probably missionaries um, yeah on their mission um which and, means they're youngins which means <laughs> they they're were. youngins and they are 
doing that because that's the thing that they're supposed to do because that is what your mission is is go door to door and talk to people but like, and do that's stuff. everyone's mission though right like don't they all have no. to do that yes so seems a little short-sighted right i mean they like, do they like do, they do more i mean than some people go, go to florida to but some people are assigned to go to like godless well i mean yeah you could argue florida as well but like <laughs> But I mean, the like getting your um getting your assignment is like a huge announcement, a huge like akin deal. to like in at least in some some com- parts of the community, it is. It, it's like, it's like it's like getting the acceptance letter from a university. Yeah, yeah, like it's just like, did I get in? Where am I going? So where am I? Where am I placed? I don't know what's more what's what's more well received as a as a young uh. LDS person about to go on their mission, if it would be more desirable to go to some place like Florida or San Francisco or New York or like a cool city, or if it would be more desirable to go to somewhere like Ghana or like, you know, Cuba yeah. or like somewhere where like you're going to be like in like very low income. It stuff. probably just so, depends on the person and the family yeah. because. I don't know. Like, what what cool? kind of area do they cover? Like everywhere, everywhere. I mean, but if you I mean that, like, okay, not you, not you have, like your five everywhere. by five grid or like. Oh. Well, they'll be assigned to like. And my understanding is that they'll be assigned basically to like another like commun like another community, another LDS yeah. community, and yeah, then there, there's be... it's it's some place where there already is some sort of foothold that uh-huh. like and there's like a, a temple or a, a stake or something in the area so you're telling me there had to be a, like an lds temple near where i was when i met them yeah that's oh, where they well, keep certainly. their bikes Ab- absolutely. Don't, they don't just wander yeah <laughs> yeah I, in hindsight that does make sense i mean i was thinking like they like go get a cheap apartment to you good luck come back in a yeah, year no 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 they're they're definitely no i mean very of... community minded yeah. like they're they're taking and they're making sure that that the people on their mission are like supported in whatever whatever way that it's more than yeah it's it's more than just the going door to door because it it is very much like if you if they came to your door and were like is there anything that you need help with or whatever and you're like well yeah i've got this shed out back that i want to tear down they'd be like well great we'll be here tomorrow and they would work on that with you um and there's all sorts seriously yeah yeah. Great. Well, now, next time we see Gary, he's going to be in like a weird collared shirt and a tie. And <laughs> yeah, they they absolutely do stuff like that. Um, and that's that's like I'm, I mean, I'm just looking forward to the Mormon undergarments, <laughs> the magic not, underwear. Yeah. Um, thank you, Mitt yeah. Romney, for exposing that idea to me. <laughs> um, when in growing up, um, for whatever reason, well, I know the reason. The house next to us had like bunk rooms and like lots of like perfect for a family reunion large family situation and it would always be rented out in the summer so large mormon families would always come rented out every year and they would go swimming but like swimming with like their undergarments like over like it just was like it was as a kid who grew up in southern california it was very confusing to me mm. Because I was very like, what are, why are all these old timey people in the water? Like, what's happening? The, the one of the things that that was most striking visually for me coming here in the summer from live from living and growing up in California was seeing women and girls with um, like spaghetti strap or tank tops with t shirts underneath. That is the weirdest, weirdest thing. And it's because they have a weird thing about shoulders. Yeah. Shoulders need to be covered. And even, oh. even friends that, that we have that have left the church but grew up LDS still like cover their shoulders because it just feels wrong to like expose them in any way. Same. Um, it's like super even, even when they've left. Yeah, it's it's really yeah. Oh. But it's it's a it's a really kind of weird it, it, that, is, that is fascinating. Yeah. That our brains work that way too. Like that's the thing you grew up with and you're like, no, like the, the crazy people with the weird underpants, I'm out of that. But I just can't do shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, it's just not going to happen. But like it, it ties into this, that weird thing where it's just like, you're so used to your own narrative from your mm-hmm. childhood. And until you mm-hmm. start comparing it with other mm-hmm. people's stories or experiences, there's that moment when you're like, I don't know, maybe 10 to 12. 
where you start realizing that like not everyone has those same experiences. And then sometimes you realize, oh, wow, you're telling a story and everyone's reaction then changes how you feel about it. Every, every time I tell a story about my childhood, Aaron just gives me this look because it's like, <laughs> no, normal kids don't have that. <laughs> no, because I had a friend who had this really rough childhood and she was telling a story and we were all like looking like. Yeah. But to her, it's, what it's happened? yeah, like, right. And it, for her, she was just telling it like, oh, I went to the, like, as if she had gone to the movies or something. <laughs> well, and it's, it's a similar experience to, um, like, when I realized that, um, like, my eye stuff was not normal. Like, I didn't, I didn't even have a thought about, like, the way that I perceive light because of my keratoconus. Yeah. Like, the way I perceive light isn't what everybody sees. So, like, at night, I remember being, like, 16 and it's raining and it's, like... I'm, you know, along El Camino in like San Bruno or something, and I see these streaky lights coming from the from the cars and whatever, and I just assume that that's what everybody sees, so I don't even think about it. And like you hear all this stuff about like, oh yeah, you have to be careful about visibility when you're driving at night, especially. Like I was like, I was like obviously, because there's weird streaks of light, like you know. <laughs> and it wasn't until somebody mapped my freaking eyeballs and saw saw like there's a mountain there. I'm imagining <laughs> like they mapped your eyeballs. They're like. You don't drive at night, right? You're like, what? no. I feel I'm the serious. same way. Like, someone just, told it was you just about like, just about like my normal bad eyesight, where Everybody I got gets headaches, for, like, right? Yeah, I got in trouble for writing like copying off of someone's paper, but I was just copying off like the problems, not even the right. answers. And I was like, this, and in my head, I remember thinking, this must be why people say math is hard because like you can't, like it's just really hard to like. <laughs> literally see and it didn't even occur to me that like something's wrong with my eyes like yeah. I was too young to like make the connection <laughs> I was devastated I was in private school and then went to public school in public school they do the eye test every year how it old was were the you first uh I was in third grade okay so it was the first test I ever failed was an eye test and oh, I was <laughs> it's oh, not shit. like failure it's <laughs> like <laughs> it wasn't I mean that was back in the 80s though so yeah. you know it, it, yeah uh but yeah I mean whatever at the time though it's just like oh my gosh i can't do this thing <laughs> what <sighs> i still feel like fine. that when i get my eyes tested though when they're like doing the back and forth and i'm like i could be seeing yeah. even better than how i'm seeing yeah. now <laughs> like well what? that was that was a that was such a weird experience for me uh the the, the thing that led to the whole like discovering that i have keratoconus thing was going in to get my eyes tested and they did that this or that this or that i'm like okay and we did that whole process and they put it together i'm like i can't see jack shit and then like, yeah. so we went through from the beginning, this or that, this or that, both eyes. And it's like, okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. I can't see anything. No, I'm like, no good. Oh. <laughs> and he's like, let me see. Um, Maybe you have this thing. You should talk to this guy and they'll do a topography. It's, I, it's really good that they like got to the bottom of yeah, it. Though. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was pretty, it was a pretty big leap because it was not, like, it's not a normal, like, optometrist thing. It's a, like, you know, ophthalmologist thing. And so, like, for them to make the mental leap, well, this seems like this other problem um, yeah. that sometimes manifests in a similar way to, like, astigmatism, which is what he was assuming it was, um, yeah. to to make that sort of jump and be like, yeah, you should talk to this dude. Um, have you have you done the machine where they do, like, the, like the very close picture of your eye? Yes. Yeah. Um, no. It's weird. <laughs> Yeah, the doctor comes in and he's like, uh, uh, I would like to see a really close picture of my eye. <laughs> well, they can identify things like blood pressure in the, like, if you have like high mm -hmm. blood pressure, they can be like, oh, yeah, like, look at these vessels here. No. I mean, to a layperson, they just look like vessels. <laughs> what do I know? But he's like, no, you have great, you, you know, you're doing fine. These look healthy. I know they cool. compliment you on things that you're like, thanks <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. i've worked hard at that aaron's had really uh bad experiences with super creepy uh optometrists when going oh. to like uh like lens crafters and stuff because like oh. they'll like make weird comments about like her eyes being really like nice or pretty or something she's like no go away stop just stop that's that's not no that's just a huge bummer <laughs> yeah so so now we just basically do all that stuff online as much as yeah yeah or go to the university we've been going to the university and they're less creepy. oh that's smart yeah 
they're less creepy because they're so focused on what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. Um, have you seen um the show? Well, I mean, to be fair, like when Erin broke her knee and had her knee replacement, like the the doctor that that worked on it is probably one of the like legitimately one of the best doctors in the country at that type of surgery. Like they have, you know, it's also where you get like some really kick ass like medical care because they have people that know their shit and teach it. And they're like updated on like the latest way. Latest of doing... and greatest. Yeah. 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 That is the fun thing about being rural. Pull off this like old book and pull the dust off. Like, have you heard of the internet? There's probably been some studies since then. You know? Well, I'm I'm purely in the walk-in clinic realm because I can't find a family doctor. But I scheduled my first appointment for like just a regular checkup with a maybe our uh, somebody who could be our pcp for the first time since being an adult good for wow. you i'm going to the you. doctor <laughs> yeah oh good for you yeah it's it's not something. an easy it's not an easy like phone call or thing to arrange well, and it's, and then... and it's like it's so overwhelming like who do you pick and like for so long it's just been reactive like oh we have a problem let's go to the like you know urgent care or whatever like i don't yeah. you know but like like how do you choose someone how do you decide what's good and what's bad and like you could do what and, I did. And, and I in had, your network <laughs> i had this physician assistant that i hated but i kept go i went once a year because i went for my annual and i was like man this guy is the worst and that was it. I went anyway. And then apparently a lot of people thought he was the worst because he was, he left the practice. And I went to schedule my annual and they were like, oh, he's not here. Do you have a preference on who else you would like? And I'm like, nah, who's available? You're like, like anyone else. <laughs> yeah. So I ended up with a uh, nurse practitioner and she was great. Like mm -hmm. left that appointment and felt like I knew things I could do to be healthier. And mm -hmm. that was an improvement. Even communication. I, I, I started. I started looking at because Halo it was bar. an ad. Uh, because it was an ad on on my brother, my brother and me. Um, I started looking at Zocdoc, uh, which is like an online thing that works with your insurance and whatever. And I found some stuff, and it was like, oh, there's appointments next week, and I was like, okay, good. I'll just use this thing, and I'll be done. I went to make the appointment. It's like virtual only, and I'm like, well, for my very first physical you ever. <laughs> Probably don't want it to be virtual. And then the ones that weren't virtual were like 40 miles away. I'm like, okay, this is shit. I'm going to find do, something. Yeah, the... you do want it in person because I, yeah. I remember like this last one, she was like, let me look at this closer at this mole. Yeah. No, it's fine. It's just a mole. But like, yeah. like, we'll look at it again next year. Like yeah. something that would have happened at virtual, but just by yeah. virtue of being in person, like what's weird about your body? <laughs> right. Gonna... And, and like, I have weird things about my body. Like I have a mole and a very, uh, mm, interesting place that is not generally exposed through like just pulling a sleeve up or something <laughs> yeah. um that like i don't know that i want to put my phone down there uh to <laughs> show like, someone <laughs> it somehow becomes less medical when you're like <laughs> <laughs> on that note gary do you have to go <laughs> yeah <laughs> i should thank you all enjoy the weekend Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.